Hey, hi, I'm Katie Critique, and today I'm going to show you how to use photo clusters. Our photo clusters come in layers so that it makes it really easy to create your scrapbook page with it. I'm starting with a blank canvas, 12 by 12 inches, and I'm going to bring in a background paper to start with. And go here. And I'm bringing in my graph notebook paper and just going to take that and drag it into my new document. So I have a background. I always just enlarge them a little to make sure I cover all the corners, close out my background. And now I'm going to open the photo cluster in the layered PSD. And the way I work with it is I select all the layers and then I drag those layers into my page. So you select them all by holding down the shift key, click one, hold down the shift key, click the bottom and then drag. And they're now all nicely in my scrapbook page. And now I want to bring in the photo. So I'm clicking on the photo layer and I'm opening up one of my photos and bringing it in. And you can see, you can see the frame over it and it's too large, doesn't fit in there. And you could just grab a corner and scale it and cut pieces off, but that's kind of um, a backwards way to do things. Instead, if you just go up and create clipping masks, it clips automatically to the photo layer below. And you can repeat this for all of your photos. And once they're clipped, you can also scale them. So we'll show this one. And we're going to create clipping mask. And then if I go back to the first one, and I just wanted the butterfly, I can scale it and it's still gonna remain clipped to that shape in the layer below it. So it's easy to edit and move things around. These are photos from a day at the lavender fields a couple years ago. Hoping to get back there again this year. And again, go and Create clipping mask, and then bring in my final photo, which is this one that I hadn't used. Scale it, bring it in, position it, and then go up and create clipping mask. And now I've got all of my photos in the clipping mask. We will go back and I'll show you how to do it with the PNG file. But for right now, I want to show you a, um, a little technique. I know people like to kind of artsy up their photos, make a spill frame sort of effect. So I'm going to select this, and I don't think this works in Photoshop Elements, just in full Photoshop. So I'm going to select the bottom layer, hold down the shift key, and go all the way up to the staples. And I'm going to make those a new group. Then I'm going to go up and I'm going to layer mask and I'm going to hide. So now they're all gone. And I'm going to take a brush. Now I recommend using one of the watery spots brushes, which I'll add links to um, below in the video here. So I'm going to go up. I've got mine named so I know what I'm working with and make sure the foreground color is set to white and the mode is normal. And I'm just gonna go in here and I'm gonna sort of start painting. And you can see you're kind of getting the spill frame effect if you have used our spill frames. But that's a really fun way to kind of artsy up your photos and play with it a little without damaging anything underneath. So you still have you know, your full intact photos below. And you can take this to all different kinds of levels with this technique. All right, so let me go back and show you how to do it with just the PNG. 
because I know not everyone has um, Photoshop or is comfortable working with templates. So when you bring in a PNG, it is a composited image of photo clusters. So we will go and grab one of our photos and we put it in the layer below the PNG. So we can put this that way. And <clears throat> here you can see it's all over the edge. There's nothing to clip to. Can be sort of a pain. So you can do, you can take your selection tool and drag a box. You can go up to select, inverse, and then delete. That's one way that you can do it. If you're in full Photoshop, you can take that selection and go to layer mask, reveal selection. And that's because I inversed it. That didn't work so well. So we'll inverse our selection again and then go back to layer mask. Whoops. Layer mask and reveal selection. And there you have it that way. Now you can also <clears throat> Go to a second photo here, bring this one in, and again, we're under our photo cluster layer, and we want to put it, let's put it down in this bottom one, because this bottom one, you see it has shadows, so it's going to present a few different things, a few different issues. So I'm going to go back up and have the photo cluster layer selected. I'm going to select the magic wand tool. I'm going to click in this shape to select the frame. And you can see we've got marching ants that show that we don't have the whole area selected. So holding down the shift key, I'm going to click again. And that's going to grab the rest of the photo or the rest of the shape. Go up to select modify and expand. And for this one, we're going to do about, let's see, 10 pixels is good. And you can see now we're up, we've got the overlap for imprinting what we would call bleed. And hold down the shift key here, and select the selection tool, make sure we've got this corner selected. So by holding down the shift key and adding, we've got the corner selected. Go back to the photo layer. And again, you could go to inverse and delete, or you could go to layer, layer mask, and reveal selection. So those are pretty simple ways of how to get your photos into the photo clusters and make them look really sharp. Now with the composite PNG, there's not a lot of editing you can do, but in the layered, Photoshop version, you can. You can select your frame, the photo, the photo mask, and your move tool and freely rearrange. Or what if you didn't want four photos? Very easily to just delete and move them around. So it's a great starting point. Makes your page you know, come together really quickly if you don't have a lot of time. And that's it. That's how you use photo clusters. Thanks for checking us out and be sure to like and subscribe our YouTube channel and links below to the products. Thank you.